Hey everyone, this is uh, round three of my playthrough of something. Thistletop. I was going to say Thessalonian. Thistletop Delve of the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Now, uh, I had Thessalonian on my mind because we just had closed the Thessalonian dungeon location in addition to the Goblin Fortress location, meaning that our villain of the scenario, as far as I can tell, has to be in either the throne room or the warren. Now, the warren has this really annoying feature of anytime you encounter a monster, you get a random monster from the box and put it into another location. So I am very cleverly, I think, saving this for last. So we're going to go straight, oop, straight to the throne room if I can get the cards, and uh, and see what we can find. So it was Sione's turn last time she closed the Thessalonian dungeon. Thessalonian dungeon was a good place for, for Sione. Uh, the throne room says of itself, hung with black and red striped fire pelt skins, dog pelts, and horse, and horse hides, the walls of this savage reeking room also sport impaled hands. The throne is adorned with a variety of cracked skulls. At the start of your turn, you may recharge an item to draw a card. That's pretty cool. Of course, it says an item. I don't know how many items I have, but it's nice to have that flexibility. When closing, succeed at a Charisma or Diplomacy 6. They both have bonuses to Diplomacy, plus 2 di uh, Diplomacy bonus. So that's not bad could be good. Now there is a global rule in effect that says that any check to acquire an item or a weapon, specifically an item or a weapon, is increased by two. Item or weapon, yeah. Okay, so that's something that I have to remember. It is Valeros's turn. He is going to turn over a timer card. The timer deck is looking pretty good, by the way, especially considering that we closed um, the, the very first location pretty early actually very early, after the first card was drawn. So that was like, what, almost probably nine cards that we don't have to account for. So he's going to explore. What'll it be? It'll be a star knife. That's cool. I would like this. Uh, dexterity six. He's got a d8 on his dexterity, so it could... Oh, wait. Weapon eight. If he rolls an eight, he'll get the star knife. He rolled a two. He does not get the star knife. Okay, that's fine. Um, we'll tick over and hand over the control of the board to Sione. Uh, does she need to do anything? No, I don't think so. Okay. A siren. That looks more like a harpy than a siren to me, but cool. A siren. Eight. Two defeat. All damage dealt by the siren is mental that cannot be reduced. Ooh, that's scary. If in undefeated, examine top three of your deck, discard any allies. Okay. So I don't want to not defeat this thing. Uh, unfortunately, I have no attack spells right now. Nothing. Now I could discard a card to roll Arcane D6. And then Valeros is here, so I'd get a D4. I mean, that would probably work. It's just a question of what I want to... Oh, leather armor. I She does not need leather armor. She cannot use leather armor. She should give it to Valeros. But I feel like the game doesn't reward you really for doing that. Uh, because when you rebuild your deck, you don't get to keep extra items in your deck. So he's already well stocked. So this is just fodder, really. So I'm discarding it. And I mean, I might as well just banish it, to be honest. But I'm discarding it. Uh, and she is... In fact, is there a is there a rule about that? Could I could I banish it for an extra bonus? No. Okay. Too bad. That would have been nice. So I need an eight. She has a inbuilt two bonus to her arcane die, and her arcane die is of course a d12. She's got a d6 because of the because she discarded a card. She's also got Valeros's backup. So we're hoping for an eight total, or actually a six total because we got a plus two already. So there's uh, two. Three, uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, so 
three. So I need a three or higher on this die. Seven. All right, that's what I was hoping for. Wow, that was... I broke a sweat there. Uh, that's a dead siren. There's no real reward for that, as usual. It's just you don't get to... You don't take damage. No looting of the bodies or anything. Uh, okay, so she's back up to six. And this toad, bury it to get a spell from your card, from your, from your discard pile. I don't think there were any um, spells in my discard pile, were there? No, there are no spells in my discard pile. It's good to have, but yeah, just not right now, I guess. Okay. Timer deck. Playing Valeros now, so he will explore. Ah, Trapped Locker. Okay, so if defeated, I get a random armor from the box. But it is going to be tricky. So, Dexterity 9, he cannot get that. Strength Melee 11. Well, he can't use a weapon for this, because it's not combat. So he just has to go in with his Strength, oops, strength and of course his Natural plus 3 for, for Melee. So he would need to roll a uh, 8 on this d10. What happens if it's undefeated? Discard the top 1d4 minus cards from your deck. Okay, that's worth expending a blessing on. So I'm going to discard a blessing, and I'm going to roll 2d10. And of course, I would roll a 10 and defeat the thing in one roll. But you know what? I mean, it would have been the cost... 1d4 damage, 1d4 minus 1 damage, that's just too much. So it's defeated, so I get a random armor. That's kind of cool. Um, let's find my armor deck here. Here we go. Elven Breastplate. That's really neat. That's cool. I mean, I'm not going to complain about that. And now he doesn't have to draw up to 4. Or no, he doesn't have to discard a card, yeah. Because uh, he expended that blessing. So, I don't know. That's pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, I, I actually think that was a pretty good turn for him, as it, as it turns out. I'll take over a timer card. It's Sione's turn now. And exploring magic leather armor. Wow, this is a treasure trove for armor. Uh, can she get this, though? This is a constitution fortitude. Uh, her constitution is a D8, so as long as... Yeah, as long as she rolls... Not a one. She gets magic armor. She got magic armor. Recharge this card to reduce combat damage by one. Or banish to reduce all damage. Wow. Ooh, that's powerful. Um, can she use it? I don't know. If, you're, if you are proficient with light armor, you may recharge the card when you reset your hand. Okay, so she is allowed to hang on to this, I guess, and even use it. Uh, it's just that she doesn't get to... I mean, I'm, I, she needs to give this to Valeros, because she can't hang on to this when she rebuilds her deck. So that's something to keep in mind. I think I'm going to just discard this guy so she can explore again. Yep, that's what she's going to do. I had a weird feeling. I should have listened to my feeling. I I just had a feeling. I mean, this isn't bad. It's just not ideal. Or maybe it is. Let's look. I want to get this armor over to Valeros. That's my concern. That's literally my, my main concern. Um, I could go invisible. And then Valeros could face Nualia. But does that even matter? Combat 12, combat 14. Before the encounter, Nualia deals 1d4 force damage to each location. For each blessing played in the deck against Nualia, the difficulty is increased by 2. Okay, so we don't want to play any blessings to get rid of this person. So what we really need to do, I guess, is... um.
so this is before the encounter clause, right? Yeah, before the encounter deals 1d4 uh, force. So let's figure out what that's going to be, first of all. Two. Two force damage. So I need to discard two, two things out of Sioni's deck. I'm going to discard the Toad and the Thieves tools. And then I need to discard two from uh, uh, Valeros. So I can reveal this to reduce by two, recharge this to reduce by two. Well, obviously, the Elven be Breastplate is the better deal here. So, or we could go in for a penny, in for a pound, have Valeros face this person, and just roll lots and lots of die to try to do the person in. But then again, I mean, Sione is not too shabby in con combat, especially with Valeros backing her up. So I could get rid of two cards, you know, discard something, discard something. She would be rolling her d12, a d6, a d4. That's not actually that much, is it? Yeah, I think, I think maybe we're going to be better off going invisible, recharging invisibility, passing the combat over to Valeros. And then Valeros can lose his armor, discard, for the force damage. And then he will, for the lower check, the 12, the lower check, he will do a recharge of his long spear so he can do his strength and melee die which is a d10 plus his uh i'm gonna need that plus his three melee and a d8 and if i fail the check i can discard this card and re-roll the die doesn't feel all that powerful to be honest but I think it's kind of what we have um, at the moment. So that's three, so I need a nine across these two die. It's an eight. So rolling anything on the d10 satisfies the requirements. So that's the first combat with Noalia. Now the second combat is a 14 difficulty. So now we've got a longsword that grants a d10 plus the old reliable three melee bonus. You may additionally discard this to add another d6. Another d6? Oh, another d6. Oh, and a d8. That's why the... I was... Okay, so d8, another d6 for discarding, a d10 for the strength, and a plus three for the melee bonus. Okay, so now we're looking for an 11 across this mini die. Four, not great, but not terrible. Three, not looking good. Seven, uh, so what did I say we needed? I don't know, uh, a lot. Eight, That's that could be good. Let's count everything up. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 sounds like a lot. What was the number? 14. Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, that's brilliant. Um, we've defeated Noalia. The problem with that is that there is still an open location. But because we defeated her uh, on our, you know, we actually defeated her. We didn't. We didn't, she is not undefeated. So she doesn't get to steal time from us. We get to draw a blessing from the blessing deck. And we shuffle them up, shuffle these two cards up. And, oh, wait a minute, do we? No, I don't think we do. Sorry, because there's only one location open. So she flees to the one location that is still open, which is the Warrens. And I'll, I'll shuffle that uh, in a moment. Actually, I'll shuffle it now. 
No, I'll shuffle it. Yeah, I will shuffle it now. All right, there. Um, good enough. It's always hard to shuffle small decks, isn't it? Okay, so there's the Warren. She is in the Warren. We know that because we're about to... I think we don't even have to close... Yeah, we don't have to close it if we have defeat the villain. Uh, the, the, the location is closed. That's how that works, I think. I've looked this up probably every time I defeat a villain. Defeating a villain. If you, if you defeat the villain, close the villain's location. So this location is closed, in fact. Which is great. Because once again, that's a bunch of cards we don't have to worry about um, uncovering ourselves. They're effectively... Uh, well, they're, they're just not useful. So she is definitely in the Warren. We aren't, but we can be next turn, next session. Thanks for watching.